The role of conservation within the National Archives runs the gamut of preserving and that's where we look at our storage and our environment and we look at how we hold things here in the building but also it runs through from the very simple processes of perhaps just cleaning something to doing full and very complicated conservation treatments such as humidification, flattening and repair work um, and so a conservator can give advice but also do all those jobs as well. We work really closely with the archivists in the sense of they're the ones who are organising and making sure that everything's here, that everything's listed, that everything can be found, but that they will come to me in terms of seeking advice for what's best for storage or if somebody wants to see something, requesting how to use it and how to handle it. Unfortunately, we haven't got the resources to conserve absolutely everything that we hold here because it's millions of documents, but what we will do is try and facilitate as best we can the researchers' requests and sometimes the archivist will come to me and we'll find short-term solutions, whether that's even just putting something in a folder or in a plastic museum grade wallet so that it can be accessed and still looked at in the reading room. So we try our best not to slow down any research, um, but there are times where conservation does have to get in and do the work um, to conserve the documents before they can actually be used and accessed. There are probably three key roles that we have when it comes to looking after both individual documents and larger collections. Um, and they would involve surface cleaning. Surface cleaning is the removal of dirt and dust from the surface of the document to make sure that the text is legible, that somebody can see it. Also, it makes it more pleasant for people to handle the documents. It also reduces the chance of that dirt being transferred from one document to another. The next thing I suppose we do a lot of times is we're repairing damage. Physical damage is if things have been torn, literally by overhandling, by overuse or by mishandling, and so we can repair that damage too. And then I suppose the third key thing we do is about removing creases and crumples and tears and getting things flat so that people can see them and appreciate them and get all the information that they can from them. Conservators in, in the West have tended to look to Japanese techniques both because they have a huge history, a very long history of hand making paper and the handmade paper tends to be long fibred and conservators favour long fibred papers because when you tear it, it leaves little fibrils that will actually adhere to your document quite easily. But there are some excellent Western papers that can be made as well and can be used in conservation. So it's a combination of both. I suppose the knowledge of a conservator is what paper will work best with what document that you're trying to repair because we can be working on something that can be um, a piece of parchment from the 14th century right through to a document that was created 30 years ago. One technique that I would use a lot, um, especially if I'm working on parchment, which is animal skin, is humidification and for that I use an ultrasonic humidifier which turns water into a very fine cool fog and I place it within a humidity chamber, a large dome, which looks a bit like an incubator, and very slowly the moisture goes into the parchment and rehydrates the skin, which means that it becomes soft and more flexible, which allows me to work with it and, and let me reshape it so that the distortions that you see um, can be removed and we can end up with a document that is flat. That means if it's going to be digitised, it means for image capture it's easier for the digitisation team to do that, or if it's going to be used by a researcher it's also easier for them to look at and read the document. What we're very conscious of is using materials and tools that won't do any damage to the documents. The tools that I use to surface clean, the erasers that I use, and um, whilst they lift up the particles of dust and dirt that are sitting on the paper surface, they don't do any damage to that surface. When I look at a document, I'm looking at how it was made, I'm looking at the materials used to make it, what inks were used, what was it written on, how was it printed. I, I leave the history to the archivists and the historians, and there's a real thrill in that, in the sense of, doing my conservation work and then handing it on to an archivist or a historian and then seeing what they come back with and seeing their excitement and their pleasure. And that very much happens as well when you deal with the general public, when you can make something available to them and they get a kick out of what they see. Because this collection is the nation's collection, it is something that belongs to everybody. We actually all are invested in the National Archives and what we hold here. Some of the earliest documents that we have here go back to the 1300s and they have a really interesting history both in terms of how old they are but also in terms of how they survived a fire in 1922. 
Well, in the immediate aftermath of the explosion in um, June, 30th of June 1922, heroic efforts were made by the staff of the Public Record Office to salvage whatever records they could. And that often involved taking charred documents, putting them in boxes, wrapping them up in parcels, tying them with a string, in the hope that they would be able to save as much as they possibly could. And certainly the archivists and record keepers would have done their best to salvage what they could but the depth of destruction was, was quite considerable. Certainly with the advance in technology, the National Archives has embarked on a conservation project to literally open up the boxes and untie the parcels of material uh, almost 100 years later to see what is there, to see what can be salvaged, what can be conserved and ultimately what can be digitised uh, for, for, for posterity. Working with archival partners, um, we can start exploring the, um, the possibilities of using extraordinary conservation techniques and science to help go beyond what I can do at the conservation bench and actually explore alternative means for finding out and retrieving information. And it is all about the retrieval of information. And so that's really exciting and that's something we're really looking forward to being involved with over the next few years. I suppose I've been a conservator now for, oh, for nearly 30 years and I know that I've seen some things and I've held things up close that people will never get to see the way I have. I love what I do, I love walking into this place every morning. The satisfaction of taking something that is a scrunched up bundle that looks like there's nothing much there and transforming that into a flat document. I haven't heard of it yet and I don't think I will. We have to remember that what we do now, we're leaving behind the legacy to make sure that people can still research their history. The more we know about our history, the better understanding we have of us as a people. And I think conservators, it's not just the intricate work that we do at the bench, it's about making sure that collections as a whole are looked after, but also that they're appreciated, that they're used and that they're accessible. Um, and I think that's the really important and exciting role of conservation.